this aquarium is just so big that I can fit in it. This is also a bit more than middle size, so this is 180 liters. I think this style changed uh, the, the way how people think about uh, aquariums. We are inside the Green Aqua Gallery and today we are having a very interesting subject. It is the uh, Aquarium Filter Guide. This is the second uh, episode of, uh, of the series uh, where we make uh, the, uh, where we make the uh, um, uh, setup of a, of a 150 by uh, 60 by 50 centimeter tank. And uh, this tank is right next to me and I'm going to show it to you if you turn. To this side uh, this is the tank and uh, today we are going to put the filtration on this tank later on and I'm going to teach you how to assemble a filter for this tank uh, this was sponsored by Eheim which means that we are going to have Eheim filters underneath and uh, there are two filters that we like in particular there are many very good filter uh, uh, manufacturers in Europe uh, and of course Asia as well and America and uh, we today we are going to focus on two filters first of all Eheim who was kind enough to sponsor us uh, uh, with two 220 filters for this and also we are going to talk about uh, uh, Oase and uh, we're going to talk about Oase because I have here an Oase filter and I would like to, to come closer and to show it to us this filter and this Oase filter if you share this event, this OASA filter can be, you can win this OASA filter at the end because we're going to put your name in a bucket and uh, at the end of the live show we're going to have a little lottery here in Green Aqua and uh, we are going to uh, find the winner. The only qualification that you need to have is uh, uh, you need to be in Europe, in the European Union. So uh, we, need to find, uh, we need to find somehow in your profile, Facebook profile, that you're in Europe so that, that we can identify you. And if we can do that and you share this live event, then uh, uh, you're going to be able to win this feature at the end of the show. Okay, uh, you are going to be able to uh, see the show subtitled in English and Hungarian. Uh, after the show is over, I'm going to work a little bit on it and, and you're going to see it with subtitles later. Also, uh, we are going to have a questions and answers at the end and you will see that we have many, many subjects to cover today, uh, all about filtration. And uh, uh, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to post them on the Facebook page uh, so that uh, uh, we can answer them at the end of uh, this show, uh, which is going to be approximately 50 minutes. And, um, and at the end of those 50 minutes, we're going to answer your questions. So please post them. Um, also, I, uh, let's, let's go with the filtration because this is a very important subject. Um, I wanted to make this uh, the second uh, episode in our aquarium installation series because um, uh, filtration is the single most important thing in, in modern aquarium. Uh, and why is that? It's because if you have bad filtration, you're going to have all kinds of problems. Uh, I, I like to say that, that other uh, technical elements of an aquarium are not as important. Uh, filtration is, is the most important, probably more important than lighting, probably more important than, than aquarium, uh, plants, whatever, because if you have bad filtration, you're going to have algae, your tank is going to look ugly, you're not going to enjoy this beautiful hobby. So it's very important to understand filtration. And I know this uh, uh, will lead us uh, uh, to, to speak about some, uh, some uh, biological thing. And maybe if you were playing cards or just looking at women or men, 
in, in your class uh, in high school or school, uh, then you missed uh, those classes. But uh, you need to absolutely understand uh, what uh, filtration is about, why filtration is, is working as it's working or why it's not working. Uh, and if you pass that and you listen to us, uh, then you will know the basics of modern aquarium uh, hobby. And if you know the basics of modern aquarium hobby, then uh, uh, you're going to be happy with your aquarium. Okay. Um, I'm going to go from inside to outside in filtration. So I'm not going to talk about all these filters that you see here. There are many, many products and you're probably lost in, in the vast majority. There are many brands and many makes and many types. We're going to talk about the types of, uh, of aquarium uh, uh, filters as well. But, uh, you know, it's, they are they, they, they just external filters, internal filters, and we're going to cover that. But, but we don't want, this is the outside of it. And this is the... Um, commercial side of it, but I want to talk to you first about the, the micro side of it. I'm going to talk about the, the process, the biological process that happens in the aquarium. Okay, so um, um, this, is, this is mostly for the beginners also, but you're going to find some very interesting stuff that might be interesting also for expert aquascapers uh, uh, covering some subjects that uh, you might have missed or didn't know about. Um, uh, before we go into the, the basics, you also have to know that filters are not, not the only ones that will help you in uh, establishing a biological equilibrium in your uh, aquarium. Substrate is also very important, so we're going to cover a little bit about the substrate uh, subject as well. Um, let's talk about the nitrification cycle. And the nitrification cycle, the, the nitrate cycle, if you may, this is the, the most important thing of filtration. So filters are not meant to clean the water. So what does cleaning the water mean anyway? You want to, the, you want to remove the particles? Obviously you do, but if you look at a modern aquarium, there are not many particles floating that you see. And there are filter media who are removing that, but that's, that's only the top of the filtering uh, process, the, the very end of 1% of the filtering process. 99% of the filtering process is biological. Why? Why do you need the cycle? I'm going to show you um, a, a little picture uh, that I made. Uh, the nitrogen cycle. Here you see that uh, uh, what happens in a modern aquarium. Uh, actually, uh, it's... Uh, Ammonia is being produced in the aquarium by the decomposition of organic material. Then the filter will convert this ammonia into nitrates and, and nitrates first and then nitrates second and then that is already uh, uh, something that uh, is already something that uh, that uh, will, uh, uh, will will help us uh, in, in the process. So you need to understand this process. It, it's, it's, it's a lot of biology, it's a lot of chemistry but uh, ultimately uh, you're going to be able to understand it. So I'm gonna, I made a short film for you explaining what the nitrification process is about. This short film will explain to you what the biological cycle in an aquarium looks like. It all starts with organic waste in your tank that will slowly decompose. It's basically a rotting process underwater. Well, how do we get organic waste in an aquarium? It can come from a couple of sources. Believe it or not, actual fish waste is probably the least important contributor to organic decomposition. Nature aquariums are usually not overpopulated and the size of fish are most of the time much smaller than, say, cichlid tanks. The second source of decomposing organics is uneaten fish food. If you happen to give too much food for your pets, or you are on vacation and your grandma just wants to be nice and overfeeds the fish, the food will sink to the bottom and just decompose there. The third source are professional soils. It is known that the best and most advanced aquarium soil, the ADA Aquasoil Amazonia, can cause many problems in the very first one or two months of the aquarium. The fourth, and believe it or not, the most serious problem is decaying plant leaves in your aquarium. If you have nutrient or CO2 deficiencies or other problems and your plants do not feel good, 
they will start cannibalizing their own leaves, concentrating on new leaves, or they might just die out altogether. Some of these organic waste sources can be eliminated or minimalized, but there's no perfect aquarium system. You cannot avoid having decomposing organic material in a fish tank. This is a natural process. We all know that in higher temperature the rotting is much quicker, and tropical aquariums have usually higher temperatures than 22 degrees Celsius, so it's pretty hot. During the process of decomposition of organic materials, ammonia, NH3, appears in your water. Ammonia is a problem for fish. High amounts can kill them in a short time. Lower amounts can still kill them in a couple of weeks or months. Ammonia is also a problem because, together with light, it causes algae to appear. Your aquarium is not only going to be unhealthy, but it's also going to be ugly. What happens in a healthy aquarium where some ammonia is always being present? This is where filtration comes in play. The only long-term method to address ammonia issues is a process called nitrification. This is a two-step process. First, bacteria living in your filter and substrate will convert ammonia into nitrate, NO2. This is still a problem for fish, not as big a problem as ammonia, but still a problem. In the second stage, bacteria will transform nitrates into nitrates, NO3. Nitrates are going to be uptaken by plants as nutrients, and any excess is going to be removed by you with the weekly water changes. The cycle is complete. Organic decomposition, ammonia, nitrates, nitrates, uptake of nitrates. Okay, so uh, um, now you understand what the uh, uh, nitrate, the, the nitrogen cycle is. Um, actually, uh, we are in a difficult uh, situation because we need to reproduce nature. And we need to reproduce nature in a, in a technological environment in our homes. And this poses a lot of, uh, this brings a lot of problems. How do we reproduce nature in our homes? What kind of technology are we going to use to reproduce uh, nature? Uh, process, the, the process is really simple in nature. You have a, a slow-moving, uh, very uh, high-volume uh, stream or river, or you have a big lake with millions of uh, liters of, of, of water. Uh, in the aquarium, you have a small system and you have no way of, of, of cleaning the system. You need to, to bring technology to help you. Luckily, technology is really, really helping us because we have, a very, good, we have very good filter materials. And, uh, uh, but, but also, uh, uh, what I wanted to add to the, um, uh, to the substrate question, because I mentioned in the little film that uh, ADA substrate, for example, is producing a lot of ammonia. Uh, this is, a, an, uh, this is a thing that comes with, uh, with the uh, uh, nutrification element of that very professional soil. ADA has other soils and other manufacturers have other soils that have less uh, organics in them, less nutrients in them, and they would certainly produce less uh, uh, ammonia in the beginning. So that's the soil if you're looking for a simple, more simple soil for the beginning of your uh, uh, aquarium cycling. Uh, you will be more successful with that. But we advanced aquascapers are always using uh, nutrient-rich soils because in the long run uh, they are much more better for your plants and, and, and they will make your aquarium more stable. So this is why you cannot avoid having uh, uh, normal soils. Also, you, are, you, you cannot use inert substrates. So what do, what do I mean by inert substrate? I mean sand or pebbles or anything that, that, is, that, that, that is sterile which means that it's not, it's not good enough for the bacteria to, to live in for billions of, in, in numbers of billions. Uh, so you need, you need some kind of, uh, uh, you need some kind of uh, clay-based clay -based substrate. Okay, uh, and also water change will help you a lot because um, 
water change will remove some of the excess nitrate and you need to do the water changes regularly in an aquarium and if you, if you invent your water change system well then uh, um, you're going to be successful you're going to make it it's not going to take a lot of time and, and it's very important to to have a water change system that uh, would enable you to make the water change in 15 20 minutes for each aquarium however big they are because then you will take the time to make it and you're not going to have problems um, uh, okay so uh, Otherwise, you can just win uh, an, uh, this as a future, as I mentioned earlier, if you share this event and, uh, you, uh, and, and uh, you are uh, uh, on the Facebook, then uh, at the end of this uh, uh, live event, uh, we are going to uh, uh, have a little lottery in Green Aqua. So if you like what you see, please share it to win this OASA Biomaster 250 filter. It's a very good external filter, one of the best for your tanks. So uh, we really recommend it. Okay, so let's talk about filter media. And as, as filter manufacturers, uh, oh, everybody is trying to make uh, filter media for you guys and everybody is trying to win your hearts uh, in the filter media. And obviously if you buy a filter, usually you buy some kind of filter media with it. If it comes in the package, if not, you can buy separately. Uh, so for example, OASA that, uh, that I talked about does not have uh, serious biological filter media. It only has foam in it, but Green Aqua is giving out uh, CK Matrix, one of the best, uh, uh, by our opinion, one of the best uh, filter media uh, with it for free. So if you if you get uh, was a filter, you will also get a uh, um, uh, CK Matrix filter media with it. Uh, Eheim, on the other hand, is uh, who was kind enough to sponsor this uh, event uh, with two. 2080 professional 32080 filters. They are using a, a substrate pro material that is already included in the package uh, when you get it. Uh, while we are in the, in the uh, filter material uh, uh, discussion topic, I want I want to show you. I want to tell you that we also have other filter uh, materials that that can go into your. And I'm, I'm going to ask Victor, who is here, please join us. And let's not forget his sound like last time. <laughs> All right. Um, so hi, hello guys. Uh, we are talking about filter media. Yes. And uh, I'm going to go run and bring out uh, the the purigen and the activated carbon. Okay. So while I'm bringing it out, you can you can explain to the guys. Uh, um, um, the chemical. Oh, yeah. What, what are they What are they good for? Yeah. Usually. Uh, usually we are using uh, biological uh, filter mediums uh, in, uh, in the filters. Uh, this produces much clearer water and uh, help uh, uh, to reduce the, uh, the waste and the organic matter. Uh, but of course uh, it's uh, not helping uh, completely to, to, to clean up the water uh, as much as you see on our photographs or sometimes maybe on the internet. So, Chemical filtration is an kind of an add, uh, an add-on. Uh, I'm going to put it down here. functions uh, so that to, you can to show it. You can uh, you can remove the colors which is made by or decoration or or by any or even even sometimes algae or uh, or some 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 other uh, materials. So chemical filtration is uh, kind of uh, uh, clearing up fully. Uh, your uh, water it will be transparent and crystal clear sometimes we are using the chemical filters also like uh, the activated carbon we are using after uh, how call this uh, which one uh, oh like uh, medicine yeah, treatments sorry, with medicines yeah. Uh, treatments yeah treatments uh, after medicine but uh, uh, what the the advance of, uh, for example, the, the pure gem uh, uh, clearing is, uh, you need only just a small uh, amount of the uh, media to your filter, and it's clearing up large amount of water. So that's uh, comparing with uh, with an activated carbon where you need a couple of liter of uh, activated carbon in your filter to to do the kind of a similar effect. Also, some of these materials are uh, uh, rechargeable. So, for example, the pure gem is. Uh, uh, rechargeable after uh, every two or three months and you can use up for a couple of years so it's kind of a long-term solution uh, for uh, clear water and actually uh, while we are here uh, we made a short uh, uh, not movie but just a short presentation our colleague uh, Gabor was cleaning the 
uh, future uh, media, uh, the, the water purifying future media for you. Here you can see how a purigen is being uh, recycled. Uh, first of all, he's pour, pouring some hypo, some uh, chlorine based. Um, um, what is that uh, chlorine based yeah, liquid? Um, it, it liquid. Could be a, yeah, Clorox, as, 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 as you, you may find it internationally or some similar uh, uh, solution. And then, then you need to leave it on to sink? To, yeah, to for 24 hours and, and, uh, and uh, this app to remove the, uh, the, uh, the dirt from, uh, from your filter media. And after that, of and course, here you can, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Here you can see that after, after 24 hours, you need to rinse it and you need to treat it with Seachem uh, Prime or any other uh, chlorine remover. We are using Seachem Prime because it's a good project, a uh, good product. And, uh, and after, you also need to, you're ready, yeah. You also, um, you also need to... Uh, yeah, dechlorinate the, the, uh, the, the water and, and after that, when you remove the, uh, remove the media, then uh, you can put it back into your uh, filter and that's all. That's basic. It's very easy to, to recharge the, the medium and you can use it up uh, to a couple of years. And all the aquariums are crystal clear behind us because basically we are using Purigen in all of them. Uh, you can see that, uh, that it, it looks like there's absolutely no water in it. Of course, in, in some cases, it's, uh, uh, if you're building up a biotope aquarium or a kind of a similar tinted water uh, aquarium, then, uh, then uh, water curl is there for a reason and uh, there, there is no, uh, it's, it's not good to, to use this uh, kind of medium. But uh, if you're building such an aquascape or an, uh, kind of a, a nature aquarium or this densely planted tank and uh, you would like to see a crystal water, then these kind of mediums helps a lot right okay so uh, uh, what what I would like also to speak about and and this is the this is the subject that would probably interest uh, uh, not only beginners but uh, advanced aquascapers as well uh, let's talk about uh, the microscopic images that we made and uh, we have seen uh, oh, and before we talk about it you have to understand why microscopic uh, 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 process is very important because like bacteria are living on the substrate and if bacteria are living on the substrate then uh, then uh, they need to process ammonia and make nitrates and then process nitrates and make nitrates and in order to have millions billions of bacteria you need to have a very good surface and you don't have too much space in your filter which means that, that the, the space in the filters are relatively it's, it's small they are like between uh, four to 12 liters max or maybe the big filter uh, is 16 liters but still compared to the to the to, to the mother nature the number of bacteria is very limited so you need a, a very porous a very uh, structured material that that can can that can be the home for billions of bacteria and uh, how can you you know determine uh, what a good material is you need to look under the microscope and uh, we visited uh, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's hardly you, you hardly can find such a, such an image or a comparison uh, on the internet how right. how these different uh, materials looks like. So it's it's I think it's a great idea to just just look at and yeah. How, so we went to we went to a lab and let's uh, show the guys how the lab looks like. Uh, and we prepared just very small particles of uh, of filter materials and. Um, the, uh, uh, the filter materials are being, being put now and, and, uh, and we put uh, uh, gold on them and the filter materials is being prepared to the electro microscope and when it's ready you can see that we have six filter materials on that small plate and this is the electro microscope and our very good friend is, uh, is making the analysis for us and you have like, uh, uh, you can see that you have a couple of uh, small pieces of, uh, of material in it and you also need uh, liquid nitrogen to uh, to cool the electro microscope I consider that uh, like a Formula One car before race <laughs> and then here you see that we are looking at uh, we're scanning and finding the right uh, filter media and then as, as we found the filter media as we found the filter media then uh, uh, let's come back to us uh, as, as we found the filter media we made the microscopic images for you so uh, you're going to see six microscopical images. I'm going from the best, considered by us the best, 
until the worst. From, and from also the, from I mean, density viewpoint. From density viewpoint, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very important. The density viewpoint is only one viewpoint. There are many other considerations as well. Ultimately, a lab test of decomposing ammonia would be the perfect way to to to, to know to measure, it. Yeah. To measure sure. it and to know. And ultimately, if you're within the limits of your aquarium nitrification process, you can have a worse filter media and still have an algae-free aquarium. So what I'm saying here is that having the having the best filter material does not guarantee that uh, you're not going to have algae. So you need many, many but things. It's a, but it's a good uh, example in the explanatory how a structure looks like right. and how it helps on the, on the bio biological side because we know the the size of these mm -hmm. uh, bacterial uh, colonies. How right. what is the perfect uh, material? For this? Yeah. So we started from the the most porous material until let's see. Uh, we started from the most porous material. This is the CCAM uh, uh, matrix, yeah. and uh, you can see that the grain size is uh, the grain size is uh, is a little bit more than uh, one and a, it's, it's about one and a half centimeters. So this is a, a, a bigger uh, yeah. size uh, filter media, which means just, yeah, just one quick comment to add on. So the pictures what you will see here, uh, the 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 unit part of it because uh, we've uh, set the uh, the magnification to the same scale. So what you see here, all, all the, the pictures will be on the same scale and it uh, helps you to, to, to compare uh, the, the different kind of uh, materials. Yeah, let's move on to the next one. The next one is Eheim Substrate Pro. You can see that there are already big parts of the microscopic image that are flat, uh, which means that, that probably 30-40% is not uh, as useful uh, as it as we saw in the um, um, in the CK matrix, but this is pretty much a porous material, and we really like uh, the the way that uh, it looks like. And we have been using uh, substrate pro for many years, and, and in fact, many aquariums have uh, substrate uh, aquarium filters have uh, substrate pro now. Uh, maybe you want to say something about substrate pro. Synthetic? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, the, there, there are many viewpoints how to compare a filter medium. One is, of course, the structure, but there are other uh, kind of important roles. For example, if you're, uh, if you're in a, a shrimp uh, hobby, uh, it's important how you can uh, keep uh, a stable uh, pH level in your aquarium. Some of these materials are increasing the pH. Some of the materials are uh, lowering the, the, the pH level. Meanwhile, this is in your filter, so it's an important point to calculate with. Also, some of these materials are uh, uh, decreasing in size. So uh, as your filter runs in a, a, uh, on a, all in a year, the uh, filter medium will be smaller and smaller. Some, uh, some filter medium is not, uh, uh, not in that group, but for example, this Substrate Pro is something what uh, is probably a good uh, uh, point to, to, to replace the medium after every two years or so, depending mm. on how powerful filter uh, you have and what kind of flow in, uh, the, the filter produce. Yeah, so the next one is uh, the ID ADA BioRio, and this is also a natural. I forgot to mention that. Uh, the Sika Matrix and ADA BioRio have uh, this thing in common that they're both natural uh, uh, stones. Stones. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you can see that the structure of this one is pretty good, and also the grain size is a little bit smaller uh, than uh, than the others. And and you have to know that uh, the ADA uh, 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 BioRio was made for the ADA filters and ADA filters. And if we move to the live picture, I can show you. Are and, and I wanted to show this uh, to you later, but now I can show it to you. The ADA filters have uh, this uh, thing on top. If you can move on it, yeah, perfect. So you can see that we have this, uh, we have this pump, and it's this an is a really, really grade, strong yeah, pump. It's an industrial grade pump, so it has a lot of horsepower. It's, uh, it's producing a lot of flow, and uh, yeah, which means that, that uh, your filter is not going to clog even if uh, the grain size is smaller for the ADA uh, uh, material. So this was the third one. The next one is uh, JBL Micromac. The JBL Micromac is, 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 as you can see, it already has, uh, it already has big, 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 big parts of it are just, you know, flat surface, which means that not many bacteria can, can 
have room on there. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, it's, it's a good uh, synthetic uh, filter media and uh, it's a mid-range uh, price and mid-range uh, filter, uh, very good quality also, but uh, you can see that it doesn't compare to, to, to the previous ones. And as we move on, we have the Sarah Ciparax and uh, well, it looks like we, we're just getting closer, but actually, as, as you can see on the left side, the bottom of the picture, the scale didn't change. We didn't move closer. This is the same magnification, and 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 it seems to me like we're, we were getting closer to the image, and we're not, which means that this uh, material is already uh, uh, very very uh, uh, it's it's much lower quality uh, uh, surface wise. It's it's much much lower quality than than. Yeah, the it's ones not before. using the space uh, the same as, as as the previous ones. No. And as a com compar comparison, I wanted to show you the lava stone, uh, which was. Uh, uh, yeah, it's frequently used also in filters. In, in even some in, cases. In, in the wet dry filters mostly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But as you can see here, it's, uh, it's not, uh, not the best uh, for, for this reason. So. Yeah, and I have a last uh, comparison for you. And this is the uh, sponge. And uh, the, the black thing is just air, there's nothing. And, and at this magnification, I couldn't even find uh, a shot for you guys to show uh, two strings of sponge in one image. So I can just show you one, the, the edge of one string. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, 100 micrometer uh, magnification times 300 magnification. And uh, this is how it looks like. And if we move one to the, to the right, you can see that matrix looks like this one, yeah? And let's move one to the back. Sponge looks like this, all right? Yeah, so the scale. Of course, uh, both can be used and both used effectively in the filters, but if you have a limited space, you have one liter or two uh, liter uh, space in your filters, it's, it's kind of an important point. Uh, you use a more effective uh, filter medium uh, for, the, for the biological process. All right, so uh, uh, you, you have seen all the, the future media and you're going to be able to see these pictures on, uh, on the Green Aqua website later. Uh, we're going to post uh, the link for that website uh, so that you can check them out, but you can also review the video later. Uh, um, if, if, uh, if you're visiting the live.greenaqua.com, then uh, on that website uh, we are going to... Uh, uh, we are going to uh, uh, subtitle this in English and you're going to also see the uh, uh, 720p high definition uh, version of this, uh, this uh, live event that we're making. And let's move on to, uh, to the filter types. Yeah, there are many, many kind of filter types. As you can see in, in your desk, we've just pulled up a couple of ones uh, as an example. Uh, if you have a smaller aquariums, of course, uh, there, there doesn't need to be uh, such a large, large filter like these ones, but maybe just an internal filter uh, is, is, is fine for that, or an undergraver filter or a sponge filter, it will uh, do the work. Uh, th there are many kind of options. Uh, some, if you have a limited space, of course, uh, better to use some kind of an external solution. If you are having uh, uh, more light or maybe uh, more uh, fish in your aquarium then probably better options to go with a filter which has more capacity uh, for the filtration uh, and of course uh, it's not just the price what is changing from one filter to another but it also the build quality the materials the build for uh, life or maybe for a more frequent uh, maintenance stuff so even from the plastic, yeah, you will see differences. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so back from, uh, from, the, from the top of the line, it's a kind of an industrial uh, pump in it. It's, it's built for, for really for a lifetime. Uh, it's a very simple uh, filter, but built from very uh, quality uh, materials. Uh, this, this runs uh, perfectly. Uh, on a on a, a longer time without uh, maintenance because the un, uh, the industrial pump is giving a constant uh, flow. Then moving to the other parts, there are a lot of. Uh, oh, don't forget uh, that you can win this filter that Victor yeah, is uh, this, putting this his one. hands on right this now. If you share one, this, yeah. if you like this uh, live event and you share it, 
then uh, you can win uh, uh, this filter at the end of this show in approximately half an hour, maybe less. So you still have like 15 minutes to share it and then uh, you can win this if you're living in the EU. Yeah, there are a lot, a lot of uh, uh, extra functions what you can see uh, on your filter. Some has a vacuum pump to, to, to start uh, easier uh, the aquariums or, uh, or flow uh, changer or maybe on the latest Aheim this uh, uh, kind of uh, an extender is uh, uh, is an uh, is a new function to extend the, the maintenance period and, and, and do kind this of a priming pump that do kind of a bypass uh, on your filter when it gets clogged so there there, there are some kind of uh, innovation in the in, in the filter uh, industry and this is all to help you better on the maintenance and of course uh, to 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 use it on a on a longer term we we usually prefer the uh, for the for the uh, this kind of uh, uh, planted aquariums we usually prefer the external filters because this has more capacity more flow i'm going to show it to you how the the big tank my iepsc tank don't forget to apply for this uh, uh, very nice uh, international contest uh, iepsc Deadline is the uh, 31st of May. Yeah, and why we cannot show this, the aquarium itself? And, and we because cannot show it because the contest rules are prohibiting uh, uh, showing aquariums uh, that uh, will, will yeah, take part of the competition. Balash, Balash have high hopes to, 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 get a, to get a good rank on the contest. So it, it, uh, usually if you are on top, uh, you, you wouldn't like to show it before the event. So I think it's... And, it's and this one has a 16 liter uh, uh, Eheim Classic filter, and uh, it's it's filled with ADA BioRio, 60 liters of ADA BioRio, and you can see the hose is pretty thick. Also, I'm going to put my hand on it so that uh, you can see it's a big hose, and uh, this means that it will not restrict the flow. And I also changed the pump because this filter can uh, you can change the pump on the filter, and it's a 2,400. It used to be a 2,400 pump, and now it's a 3,000. Yeah, it's the largest pump that you can buy the largest pump that you can buy for this. We upgraded it. And also, if you move to the right side, you're going to see that I have another filter which has the chemical filter media in it. This is an Eheim uh, 2273. 73, yeah. And it's filled with... Um, um, it's filled with... Uh, Purigen. Purigen. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's also has some activated carbon at the beginning. But now it's mostly purigen, so we have a lot of purigen to. to yeah, keep the reason the water why we're using these external uh, these uh, filters because it's easy to to buy it. You can just uh, take off from the shelf and uh, and just use it. Uh, you, this has all the tubes, all the materials usually, so it's kind of an easy to to, to go with. But uh, of course, there you can use a filter, dedicated filter aquariums uh, for your uh, for your planted tank. And also, uh, we didn't talk much about inter internal filters. So the problem with, with most internal filters is that they have, uh, uh, this one is also an internal filter, they have only sponge in it, which means that, that your biological filtration capacity, as uh, you can see the, the blue sponge in the back, uh, and I also have this, the, the, one of the samples that, uh, that I took to the lab, uh, they, they're not good in, for biological filtration. So. Uh, you need to you or need it's to good but need a more frequent uh, cleaning and you need more much more materials to, right. to reach kind of a similar result right and you also need to, uh, to to change if you can you can change the filter media inside your internal filter to something that has uh, a Absolutely. lot more surface yeah usually There's the no problem, problem is that the space is very limited so you only can use a, a half liter or even less uh, filter medium in these internal filters Right, and uh, and also I didn't uh, we didn't talk about uh, some additional filter types. Uh, they they would not go with the filtration uh, itself, but they are helping the biological equilibrium. And one is the UV filter. Uh, this is from Oase, and uh, we really like this uh, UV filter because it has two types of uh, of uh, bulb connectors, so you can fit two types of uh, UV uh, bulbs in it, uh, tubes in it. And uh, there's also, this is the Eheim one, we also like it a lot. You can see that there's a little hole on the bottom. Yeah, and if, if, uh, if the light uh, is on, you can see that the light is coming out from here. And what I usually do, I put my finger below it, just one centimeter from the light, and I'm looking at my finger, because when it's mounted in, in the cabinet, you are not going to be able to see uh, 
uh, how it looks like. So I just put my hand, and if, if, if I see some light on my hand here, then, then yeah. I'm, I'm ready. And also I wanted to talk about the skimmers. Uh, we have uh, the uh, Eheim skimmer in my hand here, and we are using skimmers everywhere because they are cleaning the surface, and gas exchange is very important. Bacteria need oxygen to thrive. The whole aquarium needs ex oxygen. In an oxygen uh, deprived environment, you're going to have a lot of algae. And, uh, and, and, and surface is very important because if it's too deep, and I didn't, when we were looking at the microscopic images, we didn't talk about that. If the surface of the, uh, of the filter material is too deep, then at, at, at the bottom of the hole, inside the microscopic hole, inside the filter media, you're not going to have enough oxygen, so you're going to have a reversed nitrification process, you're going to have other types of bacteria which are producing ammonia actually from nitrates and that can also happen if you have a bad quality substrate also that type of bacteria will start to appear which are consuming uh, nitrates are, and transforming them into ammonia and you're going to have algae because of that so the oxygenation is very important and uh, they are playing a, a key role these uh, skimmers and if you look at all the aquariums you see uh, that we are having skimmers in, in each one of them without without uh, an exception. And uh, I'm gonna ask Tommy, our director, who I didn't talk about, uh, I didn't talk about Tommy today enough. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna ask Tommy to show us the, um, um, uh, the VUPA images because uh, uh, next to the um, Eheim, uh, ADA has also um, uh, a very good, okay, so you can see now the, uh, the nice pictures of the ADA filters. Yeah, the filters. And after, after we're passing the ADA filters, this is the VUPA. It's a surface uh, skimmer from uh, ADA. It's, uh, it, it looks much, much better than the Eheim skimmer, but basically it does the same job. Um, but it's a nice uh, ADA jewel in your aquarium. So if you, if you want to get one of those, you can also find them. Yeah, and, and we all use this just to have a better uh, appearance on your aquariums, right? So we, right. we use the UV filtration for different reasons, like, for example, uh, someone who has a fish tank and uh, use it for a kind of a, uh, a medication uh, supportive uh, filtration. We are using the, the UV filters to, to, to clean up the water. So to remove the, the floating algae or remove the, uh, remove the tint, uh, what the algae causes. So all of these, the skimmers and the UV filters uh, and some others. And twin you, star, you let's talk yeah, about twin star. Twin stars. Or, uh, or or ozone. These 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 are mainly for for uh, for even even more uh, clearer water. Right. And twin star. Yeah. I didn't talk about. And if you if you move here, we can you can see uh, where we're here. So this is the this is the twin star that I was talking about. It's uh, basically also a, a, a water purification uh, a device. And I'm going to switch it off and on. If you move to this side, you're going to see. Now I switched it off. And I'm going to switch it on. So now we switch it on, and you can see the bubbles are coming out. If you're looking from the front, you can see that in a couple of seconds the bubbles will start to come out. I, I need, you need to push it twice because it, this this is adjustable, and then uh, you can see that uh, this uh, is giving a lot of oxygen to the water without actually moving the water surface, which means that uh, uh, you're not going to draw out the CO2. So this uh, sterilizer is working perfectly, uh, uh, working perfectly in your aquarium, and it will help your filtration. Let's move on. Um, we have a website that I wanted to show you. It's the Green Aqua uh, uh, Filter uh, website, and where you can see all the all the all the products that we were talking about before. You can see on the left side, you have the different categories. You have external, internal, uh, the, the filter pipes that uh, we didn't talk about yet, but uh, when I'm gonna assemble the big uh, aquarium, you're gonna see it. The filter media, the filter pads, which uh, the fi filter mesh and the other things that will take uh, your uh, 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 little particles out. And uh, all the taps that are very important also and the accessories. So. Uh, uh, if you want to get or if you just want to have some more information you can you can visit this page and you will find all the important elements 
And, and we also here. and we also have somewhere uh, a filter uh, comparison uh, table where you can you find can, the, you can the, click on any of the external yeah, filters. The manufacturer then, uh, details recommendation, of course, the one what uh, where we are specialized in the the planted aquarium area uh, where you need a bit more stronger uh, filtration. Yeah, so we have we have a lot of information on the Green Aqua website. So if you just visit it, uh, yeah, you're gonna see uh, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. All right, so um, let's move on. We have the uh, uh, we have the Oasa Biomaster filter, which you can win if you share this event. You just have a couple of minutes uh, before we find the winner to send uh, this uh, beautiful uh, 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 Oasa Biomaster 250 filter. So if you like what you see, please share it. And uh, we're going to have a lottery at the end of the show in a couple of minutes, uh, and you can win this. Um, and we have a very nice movie for you. Uh, we ask our director and uh, aquascaper friend and colleague and, uh, and everything, <laughs> Tomasz, Tommy, to uh, unbox uh, an Oase Biomaster filter for us. Here you go. Hello guys, we are here today at Green Aqua and uh, we will open up uh, a brand new box of uh, Oase Biomaster 600 Thermo. Uh, this is a new filter, it came out last year. Uh, Oase is not really known uh, in the aquarium business, but they, they are very, uh, very successful in the pond business for the last 40 years, so they know what they are doing. Uh, actually, when you open up the box, you find these two bags. These are actually uh, Seca Matrix uh, filter media. We give them as a gift, uh, as an introduction uh, for, for the new filter. And then we can find the filter itself, which is quite big. This is actually the size of the uh, Eheim Professional Series, the uh, 2075 or the 2275. It's also uh, 1,250 liters per hour. You can open it up like this and then you can see that this is very different from any other filter. Uh, you can see two things coming up from the top. One of them is the heater itself. It's a much simpler system than any that, that we saw before for heating inside the filter. And this one is the pre-filter, so you don't have to take it apart to clean it. I'm going to show you this. So, it works like you actually have it closed, like this, and you just turn this, turn this to unlock first, and then turn this to unlock, and then you can just take it apart. This is the pre-filter itself, so once a month you just get this out, clean it, put it back, and that's it for the monthly maintenance. The other side is the adapter itself, in the lock position it's fully open, so you have all the flow from the filter. You can adjust the flow by turning it, and when you turn it to unlock, then you can take it out. It's pretty hard for the first time, but you can take it out without any drops. So you just leave this hanging on the side of the aquarium, and you just grab the whole filter and take it to your bathroom. Then you can just put it back inside. You can also uh, take out the heater itself, if you don't want it, you have a replacement cap uh, to make sure that the water doesn't come out in place of the heater. And that's it. You have two plugs, one for the heater and one for the uh, filter itself. And basically that's it. We pretty much love this filter uh, because, well, mainly because of this uh, pre-filter system. No one has this uh, except Toase and uh, it's you can hear it's a very good quality, it's just like Eheim, and uh, it's, you have a much simpler life with this type of filter. So as you could see, this is a very nice filter. And uh, um, uh, if you see any, uh, any liquid in the filter head when you're opening it, you, you see it because of the factory testing. So it doesn't mean that it has been used in a shop before, you didn't get a used filter. These very professional filters from Oase 
as well as from Eheim are being rigorously tested in the factory. Each and every pump, each and every filter are being tested. can see here this is uh, 1.3 bar so 3 meters uh, pressure it's arrived yesterday so uh Okay, so very powerful factory, very professional, very European, very German precision. I loved being there. Uh, Eheim is one of the oldest and, and one of the best uh, aquarium uh, filter manufacturing companies. And uh, they were nice for, uh, to, uh, to sponsor us with, uh, with the filters for this uh, uh, 150 tank. And uh, I'm gonna close the window so that uh, you don't, uh, you don't uh, have a problem. So you, you can see that this is a 150 by uh, 60 by 50 tank, which means that it's 450 liters. And here you have one Eheim 2080, professional 3 2080, which is already prepared. This will go to the left side. And you have another 100, uh, 1,500 uh, liters per hour. Uh, the big one, the XL filter has 1,700 liters per hour filter, the 1,200 XL filter. And uh, we are gonna have two filters because if you're having uh, two filters in a tank, if you have a long tank, you need the filters to, to work against each other on the two sides. They're not working against each other, but you're gonna have the, the flow coming from the top inside the aquarium, the flow moving along the, the surface of the water, going down and then going out from the middle towards the suction side of the filter, which means that you're gonna have a continuous movement of, of, uh, of water flow like this. If you would have only one filter, then you would have the flow coming from this side, it will go somewhere here and it will turn here which means that on this side of the aquarium you're going to have problems with the flow so if you have a long aquarium you absolutely need two filters so here we have two filters on two sides and in the in the middle you're going to have the co2 system installed that's going to happen next week and if i open the the cabinet here which we were talking about yesterday uh, you will see that uh, i have already prepared the filter material um, for the filter and let's take this out also sponsored by eheim thank you eheim very good job we really love these filters so uh, we are using them continuously and i'm going to take out the filter to show it to you it's very easy to take it apart to disassemble it because you need to just open the sides and the back of it and then take the top here you have the uh, the 
you have to turn this and you can take it out when you're cleaning the filter head you need to take this out from here as you can see this is this is the impeller and you have the axis be careful not to break the axis because the axis is uh, is made of uh, 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 ceramic it's a ceramic axis so if you bend it you can actually break it and then the impeller will give some noise so I'm gonna put it back so this is how you clean the filter head I'm gonna close this and here we have the, the separate the chambers so the, the, the top chamber if you turn it a little bit you can put it on the top chamber has uh, is the first step of filtration it takes all the um, uh, big floating plants uh, whatever you have in the aquarium that's floating and is being sucked in by the filter it will be filtered from this one you can wash this in tap water and uh, you can just take this whole thing you will not have any dripping so you can take this whole thing and just wash it and then second step this is actually the last step of filtration so from from this one the water is going to go through this hole here to this hole here it will go to the bottom and from the bottom it will come up and go to the chambers we don't need these go to the chambers and then come up to the top and and leave the filter and here in the filter material bag let's see if I can open it quickly you see all the substrate pro is in here already so you need to take these out of the bag rinse it in tap water because uh, uh, there's there, there are no bacteria living uh, at this point in this filter material so when it's new you can rinse it in tap water but just be careful not to rinse it in tap water when you are cleaning the filter when you are cleaning the filter you need to uh, you need to, uh, to to rinse it in aquarium water so just take a bucket full of aquarium water and rinse the uh, the contents of this in it full with substrate pro okay so this is going to be full with substrate pro nothing else and at the top of it we're gonna have the fine filter mesh here the fine filter mesh will take out all the remaining uh, things and we're gonna also have seek and purigen in it so this is the composition and as we're running out of time I don't want to put it together for you now but I want to show you one thing and I'm gonna put the whole thing back and I want to show you how to connect the uh, how to connect the filter hoses so right here I'm um, sorry for the noise guys and the filter hose it's a 17 millimeter diameter filter hose and you're gonna connect the filter hoses this one has three uh, uh, three uh, two suction side hoses connections and one uh, outflow connection uh, these these two do not need to be used I asked the Eheim engineers in uh, uh, I met them before and I asked them do you need to use both of them because you don't want to have two, two uh, suction side uh, hoses in the aquarium uh, this big so I asked him if you can you can just stop this and he said yes so what what we're doing usually is I put this on and then I take a tap a behind tap cut this hose and then just put the tap in here and just close it right this is it so I just close this this is it so this one part of this looks like this and then the other section side comes like this I take the rest of it and I take it out from from this side I take it out and I have an ADA lily pipe prepared this is a very very nice lily pipe really love it we don't want to use the Eheim uh, uh, green hoses for the aquarium you can use them uh, for your tank but we like transparent hoses because they look better and they're most seamless so we like seamless stuff and then I take the suction side ADA glassware and I put the uh, suction cup on make sure that you wet it so I'm just kind of what, what I usually do is I take the end of the of the of the suction side and they put it in a little bit in the water so it's wet a little bit because then you can put the hose on 
more easily. If it's, if it's a little wet, then the hose goes on. You don't need to push it too much. This is enough probably, okay? And then just install it like this. You're ready. Okay, this is one part. The second part, you also take another one. This is the outlet. You push it in, in the middle, on the outlet side. Take it out of here. Take the lily pipe, also ADA. I love this stuff. It's so beautiful. It's like a piece of engineering craftsmanship. Love it. Put the suction cup on. Look at this one. Very nice. And also put some water on it. And then put this on. And then I take this on and put it to its place. And always push at the top like this. I rub it a little bit so that it holds more firmly. Okay, we are ready. Obviously these are not straight aligned and whatever, but you can you can you know just see how, how nicely they are aligned. Okay. So this is it. Uh, we're going to have two of these uh, filters in this aquarium, sponsored by Eheim. Thank you for that again. And uh, uh, these are the biggest uh, professional type filters that you can get on the market. And uh, for an aquarium of two, 450 liters, you absolutely need them. So we are ready and I'm going to invite Victor to come in with me. And I'm going to also invite Dori to come in with us because we are having a celebration moment here in Green Aqua. Because you guys... Uh, yeah, we're giving out the Oazir uh, external filter, Dori. Hey, so Dori, see, please stand <coughs> in the middle. So as you can see, we collected all the, uh, all the names in, uh, in this uh, uh, glass bowl. And uh, whoever uh, shared uh, the program. So Yeah, so we have uh, more than 100 uh, uh, things yeah, in here. Share, and think. who's going to draw? I yeah, mean, who I has the luckiest hand? So Dori? Are you okay. Actually, I'm holding the cup. Okay. You're holding you the cup, so okay, let me. Guys, right? now I'm going to move it because I don't want any, you know, like this. You can move closer, just slowly watch my hand. I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm, not cheating. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Cheering, I'm going to hold the cup and Dori is going to pick one. Okay. okay. Yeah, you pick one. So it's going to be this. It's going to be this one, slowly. I didn't change it. So the winner of this beautiful filter here is no it's hungarian benakni sekar aniko alberti isha hungary okay so yeah show it to the camera because congratulations congratulations all right so we have the winner for this filter the name stands on it like this right okay thanks you thank thank you for all the shares uh we probably will have similar uh, events later on in, yeah. uh, in the upcoming program so just uh, follow follow us and and, uh, and see the the programs right I have two questions where are the lab coats I don't know what lab coat is <laughs> you know Paulo my good friend from England who's actually Portuguese uh, is asking the lab coats I think the coating means the when you put the yeah. you, you put you put uh, uh, um, you put, you put the surface on before you make the, the, the microscopic image. And he was probably looking for the gold because yeah, I said that it's, it's, it's the, you, you put a golden coat on, on the top. So he was like, and the, the other question was from Sila, the last Lua Hungarian fellow. And he asked us, uh, how frequently do you change the, the, the fine filter mesh in the filters? And uh, I think uh, any time that you want to uh, take your filter apart, maybe monthly, maybe every three months, it depends on your aquarium but uh, every time you change them and just you know just just get rid of the old one and and just change it yeah, yeah. the more you will keep it probably will have more problems later on uh with the with the algae so it's right. better to keep an eye on it right okay so i want to thank thank you guys again and uh, the next week uh, we are going to talk about the co2 and maybe uh, because the co2 is a subject that we can cover um, we can cover um, quicker. Maybe we are going to also talk about uh, the substrates. It's not decided yet, but CO2, obviously, we're going to talk about it. Right, CO2 in the aquarium next week. Stay tuned. And see you later.